So today we're going to be taking a look at how to install a node application globally and run as command line tool. So if you want a tool like maybe npm, you know, those all have a command line and you write the name of the command that will then run that node application. And to explain that, we're going to be building a template generator system. So if we open CMD, we can actually type the command tg and that will then ask us for project name. So let's call that one, two, three press enter and then we can pick a template here you can just pick whatever template i will pick this one press enter and you can see that this generates a folder called one two three with the files from that template in our code we're going to be using prompts to prompt the user and then fs excerpt because we want some more capability with asynchronous code then we want an instantly instantiated function because we are working with asynchronous code this is an object to store all of the response from those prompts. Then we are grabbing all of those templates from the template folder. So the structure of our code is that we have our package.json, we have our main application here, and we have our template folder, which stores all those template files. And then we have our node modules folder. So essentially what we're doing is that we're just doing an fs.read directory, which will just read each file in a directory. It will then return that, and then we are running a map immediately on that to then map those to a different format. Something which is important here is this project.main.module.path. This will always point to the original installed directory. When you run your command line tool, let's say I run it from here, well, this project folders are most likely not gonna have a template folder. And you certainly don't want to have a new template folder for each different place you wanna run your command. You wanna have one global place. And this essentially just points to the original installed directory so we can have that one global place to store all of our templates. Next, we are using require to require a configuration file to then load some properties about the template. The template.json essentially just stores a name and the description. And we could pull those same values from package.json file. So that's also why that is also an option. Then we are pending this third name here. So later on, we're going to be using this in our application. So there's no reason to add it twice. We're just adding it here. And then we are returning that object and that will then be in this templates array. Then we are making an array of all of the questions. Now, this is not going to be a tutorial in how prompts work, but if you want, you can check out their NPM. It's actually very, very good explained. So here we create an object inside of this array. So we'll have an array of these questions and we'll just keep asking the questions. So it's a type text, the name is going to be name. So that means that it will make a property in this response object called name. And then the value is going to be whatever this answer was to this question. And this is going to be their initial value. And this is then the message show project name question mark. This here is a validator. So it just checks if the length is more than three. And then if it's not more than three, then it's going to return this text. And if it is valid, so that means that there's more than three characters, it's just going to return true. Now, next we are wrapping this push. So we are pushing another question to that questions array. And we're only doing that if there is more than one question. So if there's only one question, we're not going to prompt the user to pick which template because there's only one. And actually this will also return an error because you cannot have type selection if there's not more than one thing to select. And this down here, the choices, I'm essentially just taking those templates and mapping the values to whatever format the selector takes. And it takes a title and a description and a value. And we're just loading those values in and mapping them. And then we are picking the first one by default. This is when the user cancels. So when they press control C or command C and they just exit out of the process, then we're just showing this method here. Then we are prompting the user for all those questions by putting in the questions array and then this on uh, cancel as well in, a, in this object here. And we're then returning those questions into this response object. Then what we're doing is we're checking that if this template was undefined, so that would be this here so this question was never answered meaning that essentially there was only one thing in the array uh, then we're just taking the first thing and then just setting the template to be that so it will by default if there's only one thing automatically just select the first one after that we're going to have the little if statement which is just going to check if there is a folder with the same name then it's going to say hey you already have this file do you want to override it and essentially i'm just making a new prompt here you can see instead of passing in an array i'm passing in an object with a type confirm and probably is going to name the value and then the message is going to be here 
We're just checking that if that's true. And if it is, we're going to remove the old files. And then we're going to run this copy template function, which we'll take a look at later. Else, if the file didn't exist, we're just trying this copy template function. Now the copy template function here is pretty simple. It's just that FS copy. We just take the template here and this remember this would be the directory to the template we want to copy. And this is the uh, name. So we are taking the current directory and then the name of whatever folder we want to copy this into. Then we run this filter here where essentially we are just filtering out templates.json. So we're copying everything except template.json. The last thing we want to do is a very important line here. And this is called the shebang line. This tells the console what program to interpret this file. I'm saying that it should interpret this file with node because it's a JS file. So if you don't add this line up here, called this shebang, therefore it's a shebang line. If you don't include that, then it will actually just open the file or return an error. So this is very important. I will include more down below on what a shebang line is. To install this globally, there's a few things we need to get right. So first thing is the shebang line. After that, in our package.json, we need to have this bin. Then you can see we have this property here called tg. And then we point to whatever our file is. Now, this would make a command in the command line, so down here, called tg. If you were happy with this name up here, so template generator. So if somebody ran template generator and the app would then run, if you're happy with that, then you can just instead of making an object, just do like that. I'm going to be keeping it with that. So we're going to keep the TG line. There's a few different ways you can install this. You can obviously package your package up and put it up on NPM, but you can also do this globally with NPM link. Essentially synchronize this project folder with the global NPM modules folder and sort of synchronize that. So if you change something here, it will then change in the global uh, node modules folder. Today, well, I'm not going to be doing it that way, but I'm doing it with package. So if you run NPM package, then what we will do is just take all of the code, bundle it up into a package. Now there's one problem with this, which I'm going to be solving later. But if you then run npm g and then you install that file, essentially it's just a zip file. If you then install that file, then it will just install it like any other package. And then if you access your global module folder now, and if you don't know how to access your global module folder, you just do npm root dash G and that will give you the path of your node modules folder. Now in there, going to have all the things you have installed. We're also going to have our template generator. And in there, you can see that we have a node module folder, our main.js file, our package.json and our template folder. One problem, if we open this exact same folder in our local folder and we access the template file, you can see it's sorted differently, but it's the same exact same folder. But you can see it didn't copy the folder over. It's an empty folder. I don't know why it didn't copy it over, but you can just do that manually. Most likely you could just, whenever people install this thing, you could just keep this folder empty. So it just copied an empty folder in here. And then people could manually, if they wanted something new, create a new folder in here with either a package.json file or this template.json file. If I open my console here and we want our TG command, we're going to be getting the same prompt here. Okay, so I hope you learned something and hopefully see you in the next one. Bye.